if I said Dak Prescott will sign a team-friendly extension, is that fact or fiction? Fiction, negatory. Like, why well, I'm going to sit up here and see, leave some cheese on the taco for y'all when yo, you, you ain't come out and defend me when your people was talking reckless about me. I'm coming here and get all this money. You know, you don't care what you jabroni, you, you cockroaches want, man. I'm taking all my money. I ain't taking one dime less. Give me 60 milli, baby. Uh, Mike T, if I said CeeDee Lamb, Triple your we'll get a top five wide receiver deal. That fact or fiction? Absolutely fact. He's going to be 25 years old, 12 touchdowns a year ago. He's physical. He's homegrown. He's tough. He checks every box. Some of these discussions are hard. This one's easy. KCD Lamb. Okay. Graz, if I said Micah Parsons will have an MVP season now under new defensive coordinator Mike yeah, Zimmer, is that fact or fiction? Well, it's fiction, but that's nothing against Micah or, or against Mike Zimmer. The last time a defensive player won MVP was 13 years before Micah Parsons was born, uh, and that was Lawrence Taylor. It just doesn't happen. I think he could be a defensive player of the year candidate under probably almost any defensive coordinator. He's that good. Uh, I'm more interested to see what happens with Micah Parsons this year. Do they do they work on extending him? Do they let him go into next year uh, without the extension? Uh, and, we all land, and how baby. much do they want to commit to him long term? I think those are the questions we have to answer about Micah Parsons. I'm not at all concerned about how well he will play. Why didn't y'all Why didn't y'all produce me with the linebacker question? Because, because Rod, we had to get you. Were, how much better could you have been than you were on deck? Oh, that's true. There, there you, you go. go. Uh, by the way, Parsons <laughs> was on Stephen A. Smith's show over the weekend. He addressed his teammates, Demarcus Lawrence's comments of the team being tired during their playoff loss. Don't get me wrong. Yes, I agree that teams play us like the Super Bowl. We are the Dallas Cowboys. But in the end, that's not a good enough reason or excuse to say that publicly. You should never go into a game like I'm tired, like I'm ready, like I'm ready to go home. Because that's what's exactly going to happen, and it did happen. That's part of culture and identity that I just feel like we're missing. Like, that's just something that like, I don't agree with at all. But as soon as playoffs hit, knowing how limited and how hard it is to win in playoff game, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would never say I'm tired or I I feel fatigued. So yeah, he had an issue with Demarcus <laughs> Lawrence saying that the team might have been a little fatigued when they took on. Green Bay, and that he said, hey, look, we're the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody plays us. It's like the Super Bowl. What does that mean? It's the playoffs. Everybody playing harder in the playoffs. This is what I don't understand. Attitude reflect leadership, right? Attitude reflect leadership? Mm -hmm. Who's the leader on that team? They, they don't have one. Let's be honest. Well, it, it, is it we'll my, are, are you, are you going to pay? No, 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 bro. I'm talking on that defensive side because that's who didn't show up. Like, I don't expect Dak to get in defensive players' face and say not today. If you're going to be that generational player, if you're going to be that Lawrence Taylor player, like, listen, I played around great players that, you know, Michael Parsons is supposed to be that. Ray Lewis ain't letting no team show up and, put, and, and lay no dud. Ed Reed ain't letting no team show up and lay no dud. Darrell Reeves ain't showing up letting nobody play no, lay no dud. He going to perform and play with such an energy that's going to make everybody else play. So that's what I'm talking about. He's lacking leadership, right? He doesn't understand what winning in this league is all about. Is he a great player? Yes. But just because you're a great player don't mean you're a great leader. He needs to go to a leadership school and learn how to lead by example and quit talking so much and being so damn sensitive. You're a linebacker. That's supposed to be a tough guy spot. He's the most sensitive guy I've ever seen. He responds to everything. Get off of social media. Quit tweeting. Quit talking about responding. And go about your business, man. That's how you change the culture. That's why Emmett Smith came out and had something to say. That was directly to you, bro. So instead of responding to what uh, Lauren said, respond to what Emmett Smith said and maybe sit down with guys that know what winning is about in this league Mike, you, and take that you, to heart. You've run teams. If you had this going on, what, what, Come on, what man. would be your attitude about that? That's your yeah, leader. You know, Brian, like, I think Tom Brady put it best when he said, well done is better than well said. And we're at a point now, to Bart's point, where there's so much noise around this Cowboy team and they are so talented that let's put everything down for a year and let's just get it done on the field and let's hold each other accountable. And when you're building your roster this time of the year, you're talking about guys that are force multipliers like a guy like Bart that's going to help other players get to where we want to go. And sometimes that's putting yourself in a very difficult and uncomfortable position and calling out your teammate about the off-season program, mm -hmm. being in shape, whatever it may be. But instead of talking to the Stephen A. Smiths of the world, let's bring it in-house, let's handle our family business, and let's do our talking on the field in January. What do you think, Ross? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think that, that does seem to be something that's missing from this Cowboys team is that internal leadership, that internal drive. And, and, and I think that it might manifest itself in different ways inside the building. But to hear Micah Parsons talking like this, I think gives us license to, to speculate that it's not, that not enough of that stuff is going on inside the building. They had some, some defensive leaders kind of age out over the last few years, and it doesn't seem like they've been replaced with guys that can, you know, that can, that can deliver a kick in the butt. And I do think sometimes that is necessary. They have a culture there that I think is, I mean, they've been very, they've been very successful in terms of winning games, right? Like, I know they haven't won championships. I know they haven't advanced to the rounds of the playoffs they want to, but they're obviously good. Right? So the question is, what elevates them beyond good to where they actually want to be? And I do think the, the, the young stars on the team, Micah, we see what he is. Uh, C.D. Lamb is, is kind of a quiet guy right mm -hmm. on the offense. I don't think he's going to be screaming in, in teammates' faces and all that. So I do think there needs to be some level of development mm -hmm. of that, whether it's those guys, whether it's somebody we're not even talking about uh, over the next year or so, so for so Dallas. Do they, do they need a trade? Because I remember back in your day, that was the reason why Rex brought you guys in here into New York because he said, I need guys who can play, who were leaders that can make sure and shape this locker room. You talked about maybe a, a trade for C.J. Mosley, which will be fantastic. Well, what do they need? Well, well instead of playing, paying Michael Parsons, make them guys eat on that. Like, we ain't paying nobody until we, till we, you know, mission complete. I'll go get so a Devin White. I'll go get one of those guys that's out there and say, you know, I'm going to pay this guy to come in, and if everybody else want to get paid, then we'll do that later. Did you expect Green Bay to come in lethargic? Like, what the – like, I don't understand. Like, what did – he doesn't get it, man. And like, just because you're a great player, he doesn't get, know that he doesn't get it. And I know he says he's seen a lot in his 24 years. But I think the Michael Parsons that we're going to get when he matures and understands that he doesn't know everything and show a little bit of humility, he is a great player. But until we do that, attitude reflect leadership, and you're supposed to be the leader. Like you're supposed to be one of the leaders. You're supposed to set the tone in practice. This isn't his first year. They, this is their first time in the playoffs. He's been part of that disappointment. Now he understands what everybody says when he says that Dallas is going to choke. And what is he doing to change the culture? Because culture starts in the locker room. It ain't about your owner. It ain't about your coaches. It's about the accountability that you force your teammates to having those tough conversations. Because, listen, I was not afraid to either pull, pull a guy aside and tell him, like, either we do – listen, Mike is the general manager. It's certain players that were good players we got up out of there because they didn't fit our culture, right? Because if you went about that life, you weren't really willing to jump on a grenade for your teammates. You couldn't play with us. Who was the guy who did that, though? That told, looked at a guy and said, hey, man. I'm right here. I'm talking to you. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> listen, we got to fight. I don't care. Yeah. I can scrap them up with anybody. Yeah. 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 Listen, I'm going to take this ass, ass kicking with you wherever you want to. And, and Brian, been, candidly, like guess. some of our most successful teams weren't our most talented teams. And that goes to what's going on in Dallas, which is, you need force multipliers. You need players that can have the hard conversation. You could tell, have players say, hey, we're not going out as much. We're going to condition more. We're going to hydrate more, whatever it may be. And as Tom Brady has said over and over again, well done is better than well said. And that's what this organization needs right now. And I think that's what Emmett Smith was alluding to. You know, to the victor go the spoils, Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett, they've benefited a lifetime, deservedly so. They're three-time champions, Tom Brady, you know, obviously that whole dynasty, but to me, like, this team's done everything except win, and that's where, like, let's put away the shows, let's put down social media, like Bart said, and let's bring our teammates together and therefore try to win next January, and then we can do all the talking we want. Mike, Mike is an interesting guy, because when, when Micah talks, you, what you hear is, is, like, he can't understand why people don't feel the same way he does, mm -hmm. right? Like, 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 I... He talks about how much he knows the game, and we know how great a player he is. Uh, and and I think that there's there's an element in when he talks of like, I just don't understand why you know the rest of this crew can't get it. So naive. Right? right. Exactly. And I think that's you talk about being 24 years old. I, I think there's there's something to be said for that aspect of your game maturing. Micah doesn't Micah doesn't need to improve much as a player. Right. <laughs> like he's already one of the best players in the right. whole league. But uh, it, it could be worth spending some time this offseason thinking about uh, how can I pick my spots where maybe I can be that guy that I feel like we might be missing in that room. I'm not I'm not telling him what to do. I'm just saying like if, if that's a, that's a way he can contribute I think that that we haven't seen. It's very similar to when Von Miller went to to the Rams and he put Aaron Donald aside and said, hey, man, you got to do more. Mm. And for all reports, he did more. Like, and yeah. they're both equally great players, right? And Von Miller coming and, and, and telling Aaron Donald, hey, 
you're, you're the leader, you have to be more vocal, right? Even if that's not your character, you have to understand what leadership looks like. And he should, he has so many great former Dallas Cowboys that's around there that can tell him about what being a leader is all about. He needs to tap into that resource and quit, you know, worrying about what other people are saying on Twitter and Instagram. But in shows you, like you, this. But you've been a player, and you know, and especially when you you're that talented, you're looking at it like, man, I ain't trying to hear you old head. What do you, you know mean? But I'm a three-time champion. What do you mean? I, I, I'm a Hall of Famer. I'm everything that you aspire to be. Why wouldn't you listen to those guys? That's why I'm saying. That's the reason why the star means something. Right, that's why I'm saying make it strategic, right? Like yeah. find your like. What, are there spots where well, I? Who's your leader? Say something? Who and if so, what could I say? I don't have to be yelling at everybody all the time. But where where are the opportunities for that in the course of the season? And Brian, we bash Mike McCarthy a lot on, on the show, yes. and some of it's deserved. But the most effective leadership is player-led leadership. And yes. recently, we've heard guys like. Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, not surprisingly say how much they played for Tom yes. and how much, like, he he brought law and order. You have to and inspire. To me, right, and to That's me, like, leaders do. if Micah Parsons, if I was a GM in the Cowboys, I, I would talk to Micah about, hey, you're going to get all the sacks in the world. We get that. But put yourself in an uncomfortable situation and help a teammate get better. That's going to help produce a championship. What is missing from my squad? What is, is, is it? Getting, Leadership. Is, is that a Trophies. great player? No, leadership. They have more than enough talent, right? They have more talent in the teams and the defense that I was on with the Jets had. Well, let's not go that far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, that, oh, those teams yeah. were built by genius. <laughs> that's, 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 uh, uh, Strike that from the <laughs> you, 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 That's a five. <laughs> they, need, they need some dogs. Yeah. And they need some people that's not afraid to confront other people. 